I have been asked to work number 11 from the section 2.2 homework. It was all of this, but everything is based off of this picture. Okay, so part A, what is the domain of F? F is that drawing. Domain is always your X values. So what X values are allowed to be plugged in? Well, you look at your graph and you see if there's any place where you could have an X and not run into your graph eventually. You can see here that this extends forever off to the left in the left. Okay, that's what the arrow means. Now over here, it is continuing, but it is continuing to go out, right? So the further out you get on X, you'll have to go far up to find the graph, but you'll still be able to find it. There are no places uh, where you do not have a graph as uh, compared to the X axis. There's always an X you can plug in. So the domain of F is everything. We write it in an interval notation, so that it is negative infinity to positive infinity. We use parentheses by infinities always. Okay, now what is the range of F? What Y values are you allowed to have? Range is always your Y values. Okay, so where is this thing? Well, let's think about it. Where is this thing not? Okay. Well, I have a graph all the way over here, and this goes up forever, but I never have a graph that goes below here, okay? So my smallest y value correlates with here, which is at negative one. My smallest y value is at negative one. My largest y value, well, that continues up forever, so it is infinity, okay? I actually exist at negative one down here. It's not like a hole or you don't quite get there or something else. So since you can actually include negative one, it should get a bracket. And then it goes up to infinity, which always get parentheses. We have a Y value of negative one, but we don't have any Y values smaller than negative one. Okay, part C. What are the zeros of the function? The zeros are going to be where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, now if we look at our graph, we cross the x-axis there, and that's at 2, and we cross it here, which is at 4. We are asked, it says the left zero is 2, which we found right here, and the right zero is, is 4. What is the y-intercept? So where do we cross the y-axis? Well, if you look at your picture, you cross the x-axis right here, which is at positive eight. So your y-intercept is eight. Okay, now for the increasing, decreasing, and constant bits, we are asked where it is increasing, where it is decreasing, where it is constant. When we're asking where, that's your x value. Now we know our y value would be increasing here. That's in, the y is changing and is included or implied by this word. And then decreasing the same, constant the same. Okay, so where is our graph increasing? Where is our graph going up? This is easy to do just by pointing, okay? If I asked you where this graph is going up, you guys will tell me it's from here to here, right? Now, where is that on the x-axis? That's the part we need to worry about. Well, it starts going up right here, which is at the value one, two, three. So it starts going up at three. I'm just kinda, kinda making myself a little note here. And then, it does it ever stop going up? No. So it continues going up to infinity. Now when you're talking about, and, and that goes with this right here, when you're talking about intervals where you're increasing, decreasing, or constant on these, you're always going to use parentheses. Okay? So it is increasing from 3 to infinity. Now why do we use parentheses here? Because at this point exactly, it is not increasing, it is not decreasing, it's turning around. So we just don't include that point. We use parentheses for it. Okay, 
Now, what interval is my graph decreasing? So where is it going down? Well, it's going down from here to here, right? Now, where is that on the x-axis? Well, it starts going down when x is 0, and it stops going down when x is 3. So it starts going down at 0, and it stops going down at 3. Over what interval is f constant? This is asking where is our graph flat? Well, our graph is flat from all the way, this extends forever, so negative infinity, all the way up to where x is 0. Okay, so it is constant from negative infinity up to 0, and again, we use parentheses for all of these because at, zero, at x equals 0 itself, it changes from going being constant to decreasing. Okay. What is the number at which f has a relative minimum? This is asking for your x value. Where is this thing relatively smaller than everything else? And then what is the relative minimum of f? This is the y value of it. Where is our graph smaller than everything else around it? Well, right there. That point right there is smaller than everything else around it. It is a relative minimum. What point is that? 1, 2, 3, and negative 1. That point where it's the smallest is 3, negative 1. So where, at what number, has a relative minimum? That's our x value, which was 3. What is the relative minimum? That's our y value, and our y value for that point was negative 1. Okay. All right. What is f of negative 2? This is saying, okay, this is your x value. If your x is negative 2, what is your y value? Because f of negative 2 is the same as your y value when you plug in negative 2. Well, let's look at our graph. When we, plugged in negative, when we plugged in negative 2 for x, which is right here, where are we on our graph? Right up there. So if I plugged in negative 2 for x, what y value did I have? That's up at 8. So what is f of negative 2? It is 8. This type of problem people make difficult all the time. It, just remember, this is your x value, and you're going to go look at the point on your graph where x is negative 2, and then you're going to put down your y value for that point right here. Okay. What are the x values where f of x is equal to 3? So where is, think of this as y equal to 3. Well, where is our y value 3? Okay, well, here's 3 right here, and these are our y values. So I'm looking for the x part of these two points where my y was 3. Well, this point has my x at 1, and this one has my x at 5. So for what x values is f of x equal to 3? It happens when x is 1 and also when x is 5. Now the last question here, is the function even, odd, or neither? And they're just wanting us to look at our graph and look for symmetry. Remember, even symmetry would be symmetric over the y-axis, meaning I could fold my graph on the y-axis and have everything match up. Odd functions are symmetric over the origin, okay? Which means that if I have a graph that looks like this, uh, let's, let's do this. In this part, it's going to look like this over here. It's like you fold it down and then fold it over again. These two are mirror images of each other, okay? Now let's look at our graph. 
This is not symmetric about the y-axis because if I folded it right here, I definitely don't have a match. And I don't have relatively the same thing in this quadrant as I do here, nor this quadrant and this quadrant. Since I don't have anything reflecting over the origin, it's not going to be odd either. It's not even because it's not symmetric about the y. It is not odd because it's not symmetric over the origin. So this answer is neither.